So we can kind of start trying to put this stuff together, right? Or put this stuff in, in, in dialogue, right? So let's say if we thought about Buffy versus, uh, Buffy versus Edward, and um, let's say we thought about what we understood about the history of, uh, of technology in terms of its relationship with music, I mean with other media forms, other cultural forms too, but especially uh, in relation to music. And if we thought about the emergence of these subcultures and the way in which they were kind of exploiting the affordances of technology, the musical affordances of different kinds of uh, technology, right? And if we thought about, say, what somebody like Lessig would say about, uh, uh, you know, read-write cultures, right? Or if we thought of all these bedroom producers who were out there kind of tinkering away with, uh, with, uh, with amens, um, if we thought about that, we could think about producers, right? We could think about these people who were producers, but they're also users, you know, that this kind of collapse or... or uh, disintegration of the distinction between consumption and production, right, which we see early on in relation to these kinds of uses of technologies like vinyl uh, at the birth of uh, hip-hop, right? Uh, the producer is this kind of figure where actually it's harder to understand uh, the, the distinction, what the distinction is between consumption and production. Uh, if we can kind of start to, we can start to kind of synthesize or integrate these different kinds of uh, ins insights on different uh, aspects of the... Um, phenomenon, right, one of the things that we can then do is, it's not like it's strictly binary, it's not like we go, oh, it's good, or, oh, it's bad, or, you know, it's not like we, we can do that, but it actually, it is standard for people to do that, and particularly it's standard for uh, progressive academics uh, who lean or are sympathetic towards the political left to make arguments where, oh, you know, culture is good, and culture belongs to everyone, and everyone should be allowed to participate and to say things, and that's nice. And th these are the kind of arguments uh, that they make, right? And they, what they do is they conjure this kind of boogeyman who's like, maybe it's the Recording Industry Association of America, where, or, you know, it's like uh, Metallica waging war against Napster users, right? Against their own fans on Napster, in like 2001, you know, where, oh, there's the culture industry, which is like these bad guys who are trying to stiff us out of our money or something uh, for products that we actually want, but maybe we're supposed to get them for free now because we're all radical and stuff. So we're pirating them. And so, hey, we're sticking it to the man. Like, hey, I downloaded the latest Die Hard movie for nothing, and I didn't give Bruce Willis any money, but I still saw the movie, so I'm like a rebel now. And uh, it's worth kind of interrogating that argument a little bit. It's worth going, you know, what's going on with that, uh, with that argument? How is that supposed to work? How do you get to kind of have your mass media Hollywood garbage cake and um, still, and then say, oh, but I'm subverting the uh, thing because I just torrented the movie, right? Like, how, does, how is that supposed to work, right? Or if we think about that producer thing in a different kind of context, let's say all of that, like, uh, that break core, right? Like hundreds of, I don't know, I mean thousands, literally probably tens of thousands, well, I don't know, but like definitely thousands of albums of music which is made out of all of this other crap, right? Made out of all of this other music from all these different kinds of genres with amens over it, essentially, or with other kinds of drums laid over it, right? Uh, an awful lot of that stuff now is given away for free on uh, net labels, right? So you have all of these uh, net labels, and, you know, if you want, you can just go and, like, look, you can just go and download all of this stuff, right? Some of it is actually amazing. But anyway, they're giving it all away for nothing, Right? They're not getting any money out of it, right? And maybe that's we're supposed to go, oh, wow, you know, free culture. That is literally free culture, right? Not like, well, I guess in a way, yeah, it's like free beer, right? But it's, hey, free tunes, right? So that's great, right? 
Uh, but in a way, there's other ways of thinking about this. And so you, you basically, you kind of have to make your mind up about what, what you think about it. But it's good to be able to see the different perspectives in play so that you can go, oh, well, you know, personally, maybe that one is plausible to me. Or maybe now I see there's some problem with that one. And I think this one is a bit more plausible. Whatever it is that you, um, that you, you think, but you should be kind of sensitized to how these different ways of thinking about this thing are in play. But say you've got all of those people who are producing uh, music for net labels and giving it away for nothing. You can't buy anything. You can't give these people any money. You know, they won't even sell you a T-shirt, you know? And uh, it's, it's weird, right? It's a weird model of uh, cultural production where money is completely evacuated out of it. And um, But so let's say, let's try to imagine, as it were, in an anthropological way, let's say that we could say, well, culture is a whole continuum of practice. You know, culture isn't just, uh, and never was, actually, a thing that people passively absorbed. Like, it's not like there was some before time where we just sat there like sponges and were kind of injected with culture, right? That's not the way things work, actually, uh, historically and across cultu uh, culturally in a kind of cultural comparative way, like in different places and at different times. That's not the way culture works, right? Culture is a thing that everyone is kind of involved in and that everyone is involved in reproducing, right? But let's say when we think about culture now, if I say, oh, you know, all those people are giving away music for, for nothing, but it's sort of made out of stolen samples, what should I think about that? Let's say that that was on a continuum of cultural practice, right? And let's say that also on that continuum, uh, there was people like, say, you, who were on Facebook, and they were uploading photos of themselves, and they were tagging those photos of themselves. They were going, look, there's me, and that's my best friend forever, and look, we're drunk, and, but I just tagged them there so that now everybody knows, oh, look, oh, my God, it was so funny on Saturday night. Had such a good time, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, so there we all are doing that. We're all involved in this m cultural form where we're giving information about ourselves uh, in a way to each other, right? But also to a network, uh, to an, an information network, right? Uh, to an information network which is monetized, right? But which we're not getting the money for Right? So all of the uh, content which is on uh, Facebook, which is put there by people like you and I, uh, we're not getting any, any money for that, right? Like, I don't, they, they don't, they're not paying me for, you know, when I write, you know, my update, and I go, oh my god, my sandwich was great. Like, uh, I'm not getting any money um, for that, and neither are you, and, but other people are. Other people are getting money for that, right? Facebook are getting money for that, right? And they're also delivering us to advertisers, right? So there's a, do you know what I'm, so what I'm trying to get at, right? You might kind of be seeing this, is that it is, I th personally think that it is kind of problematic where we have a tendency to... Um, fetishize and prioritize the cultural form and what we see as cultural meanings and what we see as people intervening in dominant cultural meanings. This is how we understand it. Uh, we have a kind of a, f a fetish, as it were, for privileging that, right? We privilege uh, cultural interpretations. We privilege forms of cultural, what we understand to be cultural critique, Right? We say, oh, look what that person did with Twilight. That was really radical and subversive. And now I think differently about that. And like, that's cool. So now I'm like politically clued up, right? Because I saw that and I know about that. I know a bunch of secrets about how the media work now, how culture works now, right? So I'm getting kind of liberated as a subject. Now I'm a critical, now I'm engaging critically with media, right? It's like, yeah, sure, okay. So, but wh where, you know, where, where is that? Where, where, where is that? There's a... There's a technological infrastructure for that, right? It's on YouTube or, you know, st stuff's on YouTube, stuff is on Facebook. You know, the internet is made of tubes, you know? Like, um, uh, this stuff is floating around in uh, these different uh, contexts, uh, but these contexts have a material aspect, right? And they have a material aspect which is, uh, it's not like the, the people who run these infrastructures that allow us to access this, these cultural forms, they're not doing that for the good of their health, 
you know? They're not doing that to emancipate us, you know, from the shackles of whatever, right? They're doing it to turn a coin. They're doing it to make money, right? So there's a kind of a tradition also of people going, I mean, yeah, there's people going, oh, wow, look at what has been done to the cultural form that is critical or subversive or something. But there's also people who are going, you know, what are you talking about? Like, what would a good critique look like? Wouldn't a good critique be a kind of a materialist critique? Wouldn't it be able to engage, for instance, in the material form of a breakbeat, like that it's actually, uh, it refers to an actual event. You know, we're not just in this, like, thing where we can say, oh, here's culture, it's completely distinct from any kind of economic domain. That's not how the world seems to, to work, you know, and, and maybe we need to have a kind of an integrated uh, conception or a kind of slightly more holistic. We need to think about these things more holistically. We need to think about the the, the cultural and the political and uh, the economic and the technological not as a uh, discrete kind of, um, you know, uh, satellites which are orbiting around us, but actually we need to start thinking about how these things are um, connected uh, with each other. So... Um, Thanks. I'll 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 leave it there. Thank you.